All right, welcome back to Missing Persons TV. I'm Brian Lab with my co-host Deborah. Uh, Today's Sunday, June 14th, 2009, uh, 10:08 p.m. Um, tonight we're going to be co covering three new cases. Uh, they are case number 765, uh, Anthony uh, Catalano, case number 766, Cortez Rose, and case number 767, uh, Haley Donathan. Um, we're going to be uh, re-examining three cases uh, that Kevin Doyle uh, did um, in his meditation, and they are case number uh, 680, Tony Epps, uh, case number 6, uh, Jennifer Kessie, and case number uh, 347, or DD5441, uh, which is Madeline McCann. But before we get started, uh, I, have, I have Deborah on the phone, and I have Kevin Doyle. How are you guys doing? Great. Deborah. I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Brian? Fine. Uh, how was you guys this weekend? Um, and was it kind of nice to take a break off? You know, take a break instead of doing it seven nights a week. You think that was a good idea or, or not? Oh, it was a good idea. Okay. I um, think it's a good idea. It works out great for me. I think, um, especially with you know the warmer weather being here and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I went I went fishing the other night. Actually, last night. Uh, and I caught uh, three catfish. Uh, two of them are about a pound. The other one's about two pounds. So no dogfish. No dogfish. Just just some catfish. We caught a couple little mudcats, but we let we let them go. They're they're too small. You guys eat those? I eat catfish. Yeah. These these were channel catfish. Oh, channel cats are good, aren't they? Yeah, I flayed them last night. Um. Cool. I got some uh, tilapia. Oh, that's good too. I'm gonna um, yeah, but that was fun. Um, I actually love it. Um, there, were, there were a lot of bugs down there last night, but um, eventually, you know, as the night goes on, they go away. Um, but that was fun. Um, so, you guys do anything interesting? Any more concerts, Deborah? No, no concert this weekend. Okay. Uh, I wish there had been some kind of great concert, though. Seeing Kansas last week was wonderful. They were really good. Okay. Uh, we had a little graphic up before we started the show. Let me let me put that up one more time, um, and you guys can see what it is. It's uh, we're, we're trying to make a point how some cases get more attention than others, uh, and specifically we're referring to the Kayla Anthony case and how uh, uh, the mother of Casey Anthony is getting so much attention. Uh, and in the case on the right, we're refer referring to Aji Desir, uh whose grandparents have not seen a lick of media time as far as I know of. Um, Deborah had a little experience uh, this weekend, um, as far as uh, Aji Desir goes. Um, nothing really case-related, uh, but she wants to make a few comments. So, Deborah, tell us what happened. Well, um, this actually made me quite angry. What happened is, um, here where I live in Michigan, the uh, wonderful police department. Uh, law enforcement was in a neighborhood and they wondered why the picture of a little black kid is in the window on my van. Now, first of all, the problem I have with that is they must not have seen the huge capital letters on the poster that said, I'm missing. I got one right behind <laughs> His photo, yeah, underneath his photo says to call the sheriff's department and down the sides it, sa it says, find me please, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I've had that poster there for a while. I think that's really ignorant, uncaring, wrong. Um, but a really big problem with that whole situation, too, is uh, I, I just really don't consider Aji to be the little black kid. He's, he's a little boy. He's a little boy that's just as important as everyone else out there, just as much as every little white kid out there. So, I don't know, I guess, what have you got to say on this? I, I know that, you know, me mentioning this to you prompted you to make that nifty graphic you put up there for everyone. You know, you know really, I don't know if I really want to say how I feel about this. It's, I know it's absolutely disgusting. Um, and and what, is, what does the color have to do with anything? Does the white child back, back, you know, on the back of your vehicle, would he not say anything? Um, I really, I really don't get it, but it just goes to show you. Um, I guess it's maybe stereotyping too. It goes to show you what 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 people care about, and, and um, you know that you know you're white, on uh, child's black, and 
why why would it even make a difference? That, that's, that's what I'm getting to. Why, why we refer to the kid as black? Um, and then and then not even know that he's missing, of course, because nobody knows that Ajay's missing. Um, we understand that. Um, yeah, but when you look at the poster and there's huge capital letters above his photo, it mm -hmm. says, I'm missing. Why do you need to ask? Well, do you have any idea why we didn't bring it up? I mean, like, you know, hey, hey, uh, um, you, you know, we don't have this picture downtown. You know, can we get a copy of it so maybe we could help with nothing like that? No, it, it sure would have been nice, though. I mean, here, you know, we, we've talked about racism and we've talked about, you know, lack of media coverage. You know, we've talked about what the media puts out there and, you know, whether it's racism or it's in another form of, you know, like how much drama there is, you know, and uh, how much dirt there might be in someone's, um, you know, in someone's life and stuff like that, you know, the Jerry Springer type um, details to their life. All that kind of stuff. You know, if, there were, oh. if you had a picture of Kaylee, here, here's one reason why it's, it's so important to get that picture out there. If you had a picture of Kaylee Anthony, he'd say, you know, you know what, she's been located. Did you know that? You know, you'd say, you'd say something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with Aji, it's like, what's this? What? Why is it a picture of a black kid on the back of your vehicle? Um, wow. I don't even think there's really words for that. Um, but we do need to change the society that we live in, I guess. Um, it's, I, it's, I guess I it's disgusting. That's what it is. I'm just so used to the media doing it. I, I just didn't expect it to come from law enforcement. Now I find that sickening. Hmm. All right. Uh, thanks, Deborah. Any, anything else? I really don't want to say much more about that because I'm really mad. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we'll I'm see. being real careful what I say. Okay. Um. Okay. Well. Well, anyways, if uh, um, if you'd like, you know, please please post a picture up there of Ashi, uh, regardless of what law enforcement may think. Um, you know, I, I hate to say you're going to get pulled over if you're white having a picture of a black child in the back of the vehicle, but I guess maybe in some areas you just might. Um, so I guess, I guess be careful. That sounds disgusting, but I guess be careful where you put it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, that is crazy. Um, I do have another on. comment, actually. Okay. Because I know I had mentioned this earlier when we were talking about it. Uh, they did want to know if I was the crazy woman that keeps calling them uh, because of uh, someone she'd seen in Walmart. No, I'm not that crazy person. But they sort of explained it like, you know, leads they get and, you know, they don't have time to crazy follow person, up Crazy person, but why, why, why would they mean that? Why? the leads and stuff. I guess this person keeps calling because she saw someone and she wanted to follow up on. Oh, but not, not about Aji. No, no, but they just thought, you know, since since there's a poster of a missing kid in my van, I'm maybe I'm that crazy person. Did they give you? Did they give you the name of the person that that, that person was calling about? No, <laughs> no, they didn't. No, I'm just curious if they were white or black. I, I'm just really, really, you know, upset to hear that they're just so busy too. That when this crazy person calls, you know, they they've got so many things to do. You know, and they're having to deal with her and, you know, try to run down those leads and all. How inconvenient for them, huh? I mean, gosh, what are they there for? I live in an area, too, where there's not a lot of crime. You know, so they're really not as busy as, you know, law enforcement in a lot of other areas are. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I guess I wonder what they're actually doing. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, let, let's let's start with our cases now. Um, our first case of the night is case number uh, 765. This is Anthony uh, Catatano. The case was opened on um, uh, June 8th of 2009. Deborah, what information do we have for Anthony? Okay, Anthony has been missing since March 25th of this year from Chicago, Illinois. His date of birth is January 9th of 1975. 34 years old, 5 feet 10 inches tall, 185 pounds, dark brown hair, brown eyes, white male. He has a tattoo of an Italian flag with the word Italy, and that's on his thigh. He has a 2-inch scar on the back of his neck. Uh, he was last seen wearing possibly jeans and an unknown shirt. Uh, Anthony also goes by Tony. 
And uh, that's what I have for Anthony. Uh, what do you have for this case, Brian? All right, thanks, Deborah. I have two uh, two dream drawings. The first one says, uh, uh, in the woods, and this is a drawing of, um, looks to me like a house, so possibly the house is in the woods. Uh, very limited uh, drawing here. It's um, um, maybe a one or two story story home, um, or, or maybe just like a, uh, in the woods, maybe, uh, um, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe like a cabin, some type of cabin or something like that. Uh, the next one says, uh, did not uh, make payment up. Um, hired truck plan B, um, Ed e Ewig Road, um, not auto shop, and in the word danger. Um, lo looking at this, there's there's no symbols of death, but it d does say danger, uh, something to do with the payment. So maybe uh, he was involved in some type of uh, dealings um, that may have been somewhat dangerous, um, but that's all I know in this case. Um, any any other information you may have, uh, Deborah? Uh, no, I don't okay. have any more for uh, okay. Tony. Um, There's not what a, a lot website? of information out for him. No website or anything? No, no. Pickens are pretty slim, right. so you know we need to give this case some attention. And once people know missing. he's missing, you know, people have to learn he's missing first, I guess. There's not many listings. He's listed at NCNA. Okay, yeah, I see that. And a lot of times what we do in the show is when we cover these case files, I actually have the page open, the case open, uh, and I like to add anything at th that time because a lot of times we won't get back to this case for, for a long time. Um, and, and that's another reason why it's so important to go to missingpersonforum.com, which is a, the URL that's been up on the top of the screen for months now. Um, uh, go there. If you have information, please post it. Um, it of course, it's free. Um, if you want to post, you do have to register. Um, that only takes a minute or so, um, so we're asking that you know you please do that. Um, okay, I have the, on the phone with me um, Kevin Doyle. Um, Kevin, you've worked this case, correct? I believe I have. I'm trying to pull it up. Okay. Um, this is the uh, Anthony Vera. Uh, no, Catatano. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry. It's Cat Catalano. There was that. Is that Correct, correct pronunciation, Catalano. That's how I would pronounce it. Okay, Anthony R. Catalano. If you don't have it, Kevin, we can get back to it. I have uh, Mark Anthony Vera. No. I guess I don't have it, Brian. Right? Okay. It. Don't don't worry about it, Kevin. We'll if you when you find it, send it to me, and I'll I'll post it in the case file. Okay. Um. So that said, let's move on to our next case. Our next case is number seven sixty six. Um. This is uh, Cortez Rose. The case was open on January. I'm sorry, uh, June 9th of two thousand nine. Uh, Deborah, what information do we have for Cortez? Okay. Um. Cortez went missing on June 6th of 2009 of this year. Um, little uh, five-month-old five -month Cortez was missing from Madison, Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, Cortez has been located. This case did uh, make national news, though. It did or didn't? It, was, it did. Uh, okay. Nancy was all over this one because um, Cortez was taken by a 17-year-old babysitter. Okay. And uh, just, they had I'm, thought that I'm changing the she case was possibly taking the, the baby to um, East St. Louis, Missouri. Um, they ended up locating Cortez in um, in Indiana, and uh, they located Cortez on actually safe, safe, on right? The, okay. Safe and unharmed. All right, change He was turned to. Um, his mom, Makila King, she's 15 year old. She's a young mom. Uh, she was really upset. She was, you know, of course, in the news, talking about her, her baby. Um, he was located on the ninth of the tenth. Okay. But uh, Nancy gave this case a lot of attention. I guess, you know, being abducted by a babysitter, you know, 
um, might have had something to do with it because uh, Cortez is actually um, a little black boy. You know, since they seem to want to label these precious missing children, but he, he got a lot of attention. So I'm glad that that happened. And uh, here's a link about Cortez being located safe. Okay. Um, I just changed the, the, the case in, it, uh, to located. Um, let me put, okay, I got the link right there. Let me put that in there. So found safe, correct? Correct. Right. I got the link there. Um, okay, uh, the uh, one. Uh, there are two dream drawings. Um, I'm just going to mention it real quick. Uh, the first one says uh, the letter is the letter S, uh, Sierra, and then D M. Um, this could be initials. Uh, no food. She wanted baby. Child has marks on her body. Uh, mother's room is not safe for for Cortez. Uh, and then hole. Um, really not sure what that means um, as far as um, a hole or something. I don't know. The, the next one is a picture. Uh, it says safe, um, so at least that was correct. Uh, and then the number five. Um, that to me looks like a... Um, it's completely sideways. I, I think I should turn this picture around. Um, let me actually do that. Uh, it's a, it's a it looks like a maybe a two-story home. Uh, and then maybe to the left of it might be uh, uh, power lines in the distance or something. Uh, Maybe a trash can or something. I'm not really sure. Um, you guys look at the case. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and flip that picture uh, to way where it should be. Um, and while I'm doing that, Kevin, um, I have your notes on the case. Do you have them, Kevin? Yes. Okay. On uh, Cortez uh, Rose, mm -hmm. I have uh, my meditation. Alive, sign with 415 uh, route number, in a Midwest state on a regular basis, wants to go to California, alias Roberts. And my notes after the meditation is uh, Cortez may be alive. 415 could be a route number for a street or road. Cortez may be in the Midwestern state on a regular basis at this time, the time I was doing this meditation, and Cortez may be heading to California, possibly. Someone possibly involved is using the name Robert or Roberts, and that's all I have. All right, thanks. Um, definitely safe. We got that right. Uh, the number five, I did get the number five in my uh, in the dream drawings, so I'll put that up there. Um, uh, Deborah, I'm gonna, I'm getting, I'm looking at the story real fast, just so I can put something up in there. Um, but anyways, the case is closed, um, and I'm very happy that the child was found. Um, give me one second. And it says missing Madison baby found in Indiana. That's Midwest, isn't it? Deborah. Yes, it is. Okay, here you go, Kevin. Uh, and babysitter in custody. Uh, and there's okay. a well, and that babysitter, too, um, she had recently relocated from New York. She moved. We have some kind of uh, audio going on. Okay, I think it's okay now. Okay. Um, she had, a few months ago, moved to Indiana from New York with her boyfriend. And uh, it was upsetting when the story broke because she had some felony convictions, even though she's that young. Um, and one of her convictions was actually for child endangerment. This, this, this King, Malika King, that's her? That's the mother? Yes. Wow, okay. Um, do you know how young she looks, right? Yeah, she is very young. I believe she's 15. Okay. All right, go on. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm trying I, to copy. I just I'm wanted to, to mention that. I mean, that's pretty good for a 17-year-old to, you know, have felony convictions already, and then, you know, one for child endangerment. I mean, that's just that's awful.
there was talk that, you know, possibly she wanted a child of her own type thing. So and I'm not really sure why she did it, if that's why or not. Okay. Um, I've got uh, that Hawaii up there. Hawaii was the 15-year-old mom lives alone with the baby. Um, actually, I'm not sure. Uh, in looking for Cortez with, you know, when she was out putting up posters and doing a whole bunch of stuff, um, baby's godmother. Cortez's godmother was with her. So uh, I'm not sure. Okay. You know, who the young mom lives with. All right, I'm almost there. I'm just finishing up on this page. If you have anything else on this case, go ahead and, and talk, Deborah. Well, oh, here's something I could mention. Hopefully the 17-year-old that took Cortez, seeing as how, you know, she did this and she has a prior uh, conviction for child endangerment, hopefully she never breeds. Hopefully she never has children. Uh, I hate to say that about people, but you know, I, I just uh, I feel bad for children that would put up with you know parents that. I'm concerned about the age. Fif as, Fifteen. As we see. So she was. I mean, she could have been pregnant as early as thirteen. Right. 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 Yeah, she could have been. Uh, but at that age, don't you have to have some type of mandatory? supervision or, or something like that? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't really know how that works. I think isn't, you know, emancipation like 16. I don't know if you can be when you're younger than 16. I'm not sure how that works. But you would think that she's got to be living with someone. All I know is that throughout, you know, looking while this case was going on and Cortez was missing, the person that was at her side, you know, young mom's side, was um, Cortez's godmother. Okay. Uh, I'll save this later just in case. Okay, I, I have the, that information up. I, I went to the, um, the bnd.com website that she sent me, um, and I, I got the information right there. The five-month-old Madison boy who was kidnapped uh, Saturday afternoon by his babysitter was found in excellent condition in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, the U.S. Marshals, I'm just reading this because I'm waiting for the page to save. The U.S. Marshals Service uh, located Daniel Melinda, or I'm sorry, Medina, uh, 17, about 4.20 p.m. Uh, Tuesday at a residence in Indiana and took her into custody. Uh, Medina was charged Monday with aggravated kidnapping. Um, Mordina, 16, uh, left and her son, this is a picture I'm putting up right now, uh, Cortez uh, Rose, with Medina at 1545, which is the fiber coming up with uh, 5th Street, too, Kevin, in Madison. Medina is a relative of someone who lives at that address. So, the five came up a bunch of times. Um, um, okay, we have someone here in chat who's uh, got an answer to the question you asked when you asked about, you know, mandatory supervision. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandra says, not in Oklahoma. If you have a baby, you're an adult, except for buying beer or cigarettes. Okay, so you have a baby at 11 years old, and you are an adult? I'm just saying, is, is, I guess it's feasibly possible to have a, a baby at 11, right? I'm, I'm just kind of dramatizing a little bit, but, I mean, well, that's I would way too that, young. You know, I hope that young parents, who, whoever you know, our young parents out there, that they have a good support system, you know, to help them out, whether it be relative or friend, you know, and if it's not their parents, hopefully there's, you know, other adults in their life that are there for them as, you know, in Cortez's case here, we saw his godmother was around, mm -hmm. you know, when, when he went missing, she was active with mom trying to, you know, spread the word and, and find him and bring him home. So, you know, she's a young mom, but she's got you know, from what we could all see, she's got a good support system there with an adult that really loves, you know, Cortez and, and you know, obviously must help out and stuff like that. You know, so those that are young, I, I just really hope that they have, you know, proper support. Okay. It's kind of scary to think of those that don't. That's a scary thought. Okay. Um, thank you. Let's move on. Um, in the next case is case number 767. Uh, this is Haley Donathan. Um, the case was opened June 11th, 2009. Uh, Deborah, what information do we have uh, for Haley? Well, Haley's case is 
has made the news uh, quite big. Um, Haley's been missing since the 28th of May. Uh, this is a case that truly bothers me. Uh, I'll say why in a, in a minute here. Um, she's been listed as a three-year-old and a four-year-old both. Um, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure. Why? Well, I know when Madeline right. McCann went missing, she was three. I think she just turned four. I mean, we were talking about they got the information wrong, or what? Well, uh, it's been listed both ways. Okay. And it's been stated both ways in the news too that she's three, and it's been stated that she's four. Okay. Um, Haley's mom um, and her are in the company of someone named Robbie Porter, and he's a convicted sex offender. He's a tier three offender, the worst kind. Uh, he has offenses for um, minors. Uh, Haley is two feet five inches tall and she weighs about 37 pounds. Last seen wearing a white t-shirt with mini house on the front and purple shorts that say sweet on them. She's missing from Crestline, Ohio. Now, this Robbie, uh, he in some kind of supervision program just recently gotten out of prison I, I believe what happened was he he escaped so to speak from a supervision program um, he had help doing this and it turns out that help he had doing this would be uh, Haley's uncle and some other family members there and friends and stuff so apparently they went camping and they thought that they had gone camping in uh, central Ohio and uh, they had also talked about them possibly going to Colorado or Arizona. Now, here we have once again, like in the case with Nevaeh Buchanan, we have a mom that, that seems to think for some really twisted reason that it is okay to have her young daughter around a convicted sex offender. Uh, this really bothers me, and I've said before, these people need to have li a license to breed. I, I, it, it just really bothers me that anyone would ever for a second think that it's okay to do something like this. So I'm, <laughs> I'm getting really angry here talking about it. So you want to go ahead with this case, well, Brian? You know, a lot of times when you know something is just common sense and that somebody doesn't really abide by that, it's really, really frustrating, I guess, for you. Well, that's just <laughs> yeah. it. common sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, wow. Uh, and then, like, two cases, like, so close together where that's, like, the big headline when the case breaks that, you know, child is with or has been around someone like that so um what do you have to share for Haley's case okay well um i have three dream drawings and from the looks at it that she's safe um could, could be home really really soon if she already hasn't uh um been been located um and i actually just i was reading this and i and i did look i just looked on the internet um as far as i know she's still missing um but the, the first dream drawing says june 14th uh, 741. I'm assuming that would, could be to, today. Um, reports are wrong. Turn back. State land next to them. Safe and then the word cold. Um, second one says uh, fire, tent, old school bus. Um, could be possibly that uh, she's been staying uh, in some type of tent. I've got a drawing of the tent there. It's like a pretty simple two or three man tent. Um, it says fire that could actually be maybe a campfire or something like that. It definitely looks like a fire or a camping setting, uh, and there could be an old school bus uh, next to it, which is definitely possible. Uh, third dream drawing says uh, he has sad eyes. Um, he wanted uh, the papers and then for money. Um, and I put question marks at the both of them because because I'm not exactly sure that's what it says, um, but I'm pretty sure. But when I usually put a question mark and that's not on the dream drawing, um, it just means I can't read my handwriting. Um, Kevin, um, I don't have your notes. I think you have them. Uh, for Haley Donathan, um, I did a meditation, <clears throat> and I stated that Haley is alive. My meditation, uh, white Ford car, two-door, tinted windows, Florida registration, 2006, Jim's auto repair. 
will ditch or have ditched vehicle, airplane waiting, private charter to New Mexico or Mexico. Mitchell knows they plan to keep her forever. Her safe return is for more open minds for all involved. <clears throat> My notes after the meditation, Haley could be alive. She may be or have been traveling in a, in a white car with Florida registration and that may have been at an auto repair shop recently. People or person involved may get rid of that same car. Uh, an airplane may be taking Haley somewhere. Someone named Mitchell may know something important concerning Haley. <clears throat> and everyone involved with this missing person case in any way including everybody in this chat room, everybody who's listening to this uh, broadcast, no matter who they are or where they are, uh, must all keep an open mind concerning this missing person case for her possible safe return. And that's all I have. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Um, good detail, too. Um, I have notes uh, from uh, Penchong Van. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, let me know. Um, he was a guest on our show a few nights ago. I have his notes. I'm going to go ahead and read those. Uh, Haley Donathan. Uh, last night I saw a vision of a house with a triangular uh, roofing design. Uh, outside the house is a, rock, is a rocky wall or fence. Also a, also a small home uh, appeared to be abandoned. Uh, there was a wooden slash metal frames that were that nailed to the windows and doors from the entrance. Uh, and then he says, this morning I saw a very short a uh, haired uh, uh, woman aged uh, 40 to 50 in a shop, antique clothing or clothing shop. Uh, and then it says small shop. Uh, and he said it did another viewing through paper. Um, I see a large room, a bed. Uh, outside uh, is a uh, field with a large tree that, uh, that centers a walk, I guess, walking path. Uh, along the path appears to be grave, uh, gravestones. Um, so that could be a cemetery, um, and that, that's all. That's all we have so far in this case. Um, if anybody else wants to uh, help, um, please let us know. Uh, we're always willing to have anybody on. Uh, anything else, guys? Uh, I have something here, Brian. Okay. Um, as far as uh, Haley goes, um, you know, traveling with her mom and uh, this piece of scum, Robbie Potter. Mm -hmm. um, some things to know are um, that the mom did have a problem with meth in the past. Okay. Um, she had only known Robbie Potter for a matter of days. She took off with him, taking her little girl along with. Uh, and the charge that um, one of the charges Robbie uh, served time for was sexual battery of a minor is what they called it. Uh, they say that they could be camping in Delaware County, Ohio. Uh, so when I mentioned Central Ohio, um, that's the county that they were they were, you know, looking at the most. And as far as Arizona and Colorado go, uh, they talk about Phoenix, Arizona, and Stratton, Colorado, because there's connections in those cities. So okay. um, here we're dealing with, you know, Haley being out there with a couple of adults, her mom and I guess mom's boy, whatever you want to call the guy, mm -hmm. um, two adults that, that have no common sense whatsoever, no respect for the law, and they have no common sense as far as making proper decisions or exercising, you know, proper judgment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they can't do it in their own lives, and now they've dragged a little, a little girl along for the ride on this one. So, um... Yeah, I, I really hope Haley is found soon and she can get, you know, back to Ohio or